Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Math 100. So today we are going to wrap up chapter four by looking at section 7.4, which is about fractals. Right? So fractals are geometric and it, uh, they have a lot to do with art, even though they were sort of discovered uh, almost by accident by uh, mathematical uh, uh, computations, all right? And so I'll tell you a little bit more about this, but I'm going to start this lecture uh, by showing you some slides because it's hard to talk about fractals without showing you the actual fractal pictures, all right? So get your notes ready. But first, let me show you some slides, all right? This is section 7.4. Oh, before I start, by the way, uh, let me just mention that I have the virtual background, which is, and you may recognize that pretty place on the hill on West LA, uh, the Getty Center, uh, which is a fine, fine museum. All right, now let's go to art and fractals. All right, so section 7.4 is about fractals. And so I know you have, you, you have your notes ready. I hope you do, uh, but let's set the notes aside. I will uh, show you how to fill in the blanks in the notes after these slides are shown, okay? Uh, so here's a, uh, the picture of a fractal. And you can see that, uh, that, there's a, that there are lots of patterns, but the patterns are repeating themselves. So patterns with self-similarity is basically uh, what fractals are all about. Okay, um, so let's go to the next one here. What is a fractal? It's a structure or a pattern characterized by self-similarity. As you zoom in, okay, as you zoom in here, as we will see in a few seconds, uh, you will see the same pattern over and over again. So, and you can see this in nature, for instance, in broccoli and fern and coastline, also in art and music and other uh, pieces of uh, artistic work. All right, so here's a, a broccoli. And if you look at this part, zoom in, it'll be, you know, it's very much like that. So you can see smaller and smaller uh, structures coming up. So here is a snowflake and you just zoom it up and then you can see tiny, tiny different versions or the models of, of uh, snowflake. Here's a lightning and you see all these branching apart if you take one of these parts here and you can see more branching apart okay uh, here's another one you see you have one line here right one uh, big stem and then a bunch of these smaller ones are coming out but if you pick one of these okay then you can see another sort of main uh, main stem uh, and then there are smaller structures uh, leaves on both sides if you look at even one of these that would look very much like this. Okay, so this is a great classic example of a uh, fractal in nature. Uh, you see this in, and I'm sorry about these uh, little um, drawings here, uh, but uh, this is a picture in the uh, Edo period in Japan, which ended in 1886. But uh, this is a art, a pretty well known art in the uh, art world by Hokusai. And uh, these ukiyo-e prints actually influenced the uh, French Impressionists and Van Gogh uh, significantly. But if you look at a, a wave here and zoom it up, you can see waves uh, branching up and then each branch or a little strand of wave is also uh, having similar patterns, okay? So a fractal is basically a pattern uh, in which you can see self-similarity. This is a coastline. Of course, this is sort of a natural, you know, geometric shape. If you zoom this in, uh, you can see that parts also look like the whole, you know? And so that is a characteristic of a fractal. And so uh, we have iterated fractal. These are the ones you can generate by computer. You see this square and you take one uh, square out and make it black, right? And now you have three squares left. But let's try the same uh, iteration, same pattern to each of these white squares uh, by removing the, uh, the corner, one quarter, which is on the right top corner. And then you lose this part, this part, and this part. You do it again. Now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine white smaller squares. And you take this part out, this part out, this part out, do all that for each of the remaining white squares. It becomes that. And if you do it again, it becomes this, and then this, 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 this. After seven uh, iterations or after seven steps, this picture becomes very much like this. 
the resulting picture is going to be uh, something that goes to the limit, and that is called a uh, fractal. Okay, so here's an example that you see in the book. Uh, suppose that we start with a, a, a triangle. You remove the, the uh, upside down triangle in the middle. Okay, now that will leave you with three smaller black triangles. Let's remove the middle upside down inverted triangle from the middle of each of these remaining black triangles. And this is what you get. And you keep doing this. And then this is after a step three. All right, this is again the first three steps of um, the, the iterative process. What we have, and we'll do this together in a few minutes, is that we are given an initiator, which is step zero. This is the shape that you start from. And then we define a generator, which tells you what to do after step one. And then we repeat that process over and over again. That's how you generate a fractal. OK, all right, so here is the beginning initiator. And let's see the generate, generator is this. Now let's try to um, say what is happening, try to explain what's happening to the uh, initiator uh, as you go to the generator. What is a generator doing? Well, in this case, uh, from one end of the uh, line segment, two branches, two new branches are sort of appearing, right? So that's what the generator does. And now you have the step one, which is the generator. And then you see two ends. And from these two ends, two more branches, from each of these two ends, two more branches will grow. And so step two will look like this. Did you get it? Okay. When you, uh, so we then replace each branch of step one with a scaled copy of the generator. So you take this segment and this segment, and then you do the same, you know, just add two branches to the um, uh, end of each of the branches. And so if you do that, step three will look like this, step four will look like this. And uh, after, this is called the final shape, but you know, this is after many steps because you can't get to the final step because this continues forever but you have a nice looking tree here. All right, so this is uh, how you generate a fractal using a computer. There are some more sophisticated examples. Artists and computer graphic, uh, graphic artists have uh, done a lot of experiments with this for maybe over the last three or four decades, I would say, uh, sophisticated examples. There's one, uh, there's another one here. Uh, this is actually coming from uh, uh, fairly complicated mathematical calculations on the set of what is called complex numbers. Those are the real numbers with I. And so, uh, and this black part is, uh, is a famous uh, set called the Man Mendelbrot set, okay? Because it was found by a man named Mendelbrot. And then uh, we have more examples. Now this is what? This looks like a sort of a out of a focus picture of a uh, landscape, right? But it turns out this entire thing was generated by fractals using computers. There, there, nobody actually drew this painting. Somebody programmed fractals and colored and added some texture to make this landscape pic picture. This is completely computer generated, sort of a strange um, thing. Okay, so that's what the, um, uh, the fractals look like. Now let's go back into the notes.